Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Detroit police demand action after losing another officer to gun violence. It's getting a little bit old hearing about what everyone's going to do. It's time to do it. The family, friends, and co-workers of Officer Lauren Quartz left to grieve after he volunteered to work a double shift. We were robbed of one of our heroes. The city was robbed of, of a great father, a great police officer. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. Detroit's chief of police spoke a short time ago. You could hear the emotion and the determination in his voice after the loss of Officer Quartz. Chief White shared new information on the investigation as well as the changes he'd like to see in the future. The late officer's wife sharing personal memories with Local 4, calling Quartz her best friend and an amazing dad. We've been gathering the very latest information. We're going to start with Rod Maloney, who is looking into how this happened. Rod. Well, Karen, Chief White said that this was essentially a suicide by cop. Now, take a look behind me here at the corner of Joy and Marlowe. You see the windows that are broken out on the second floor. The young man, 19 years old, was firing what they called a Draco gun, which they say is much like an AK-47, had a banana clip, and he was shooting out of those windows down at the street at cars at first, which brought the police out here, and then the police came. And when officers first arrived, they say the young man fired down on the police from that window. And that's how the officer was killed. Now we have some surveillance video to show the chaos that ensued thereafter. Officer down, Joy and Marlowe, Joy and Marlowe. The first call went out just before 7.30 p.m. last night. Shots fired. An auto repair shop at the corner had its camera rolling as the first officers arrived. You can see one with his weapon drawn in front of the white building here. Then an unmarked Detroit police scout car backs up into frame. We need everybody now. As other officers arrive, they start moving toward the intersection of Joy and Marlowe. And you'll see here the danger of the gunman being obvious. At least a dozen officers turn heel, start running in the opposite direction looking for Cover. It takes a while, but then officers as a group cautiously begin moving toward the gunfire in the scene. The cameras don't show the interaction between Officer Quartz and the gunman. A second camera view shows the immediate police response as the call went out for police backup and it came in droves. Detroit Police Chief James White today made it clear Officer Lauren Quartz was more than just a good cop. We are devastated, but we are not defeated. We are devastated, but we are not defeated. And we will not give up. We're not going to be detracted. We're going to continue to enforce the law constitutionally and get these trigger pullers, these people who victimize our community, who victimize our neighborhoods, off the street. Now, you're looking down the street at the intersection, and it is right here where Officer Quartz was gunned down. Now, the chief talking about a rather heroic moment here because Quartz's partner, Amanda Hutchings is her name, jumped out of her cruiser. And when she did, she went and she applied pressure on the wound in his neck. She was preventing him from bleeding out. That's her training, and that was her partner. And the chief said that it was a remarkable bit of heroism because at that moment, we're told, the gunman came down and out the door and was aiming his gun at Officer Hutchins while she was putting pressure on the officer. And the chief says that she just turned her back on the gunman. Another police officer came and shot and killed the gunman as he aimed his gun at her. He said it was a remarkable moment, one of the most incredible things he has ever seen. And in the meantime, behind me here, you see balloons there. A woman came up, one of the women of the neighborhood, and put those there. We'll be talking to her coming up later on Local 4 News at 5. So reporting from Detroit's west side, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Can't believe what Officer Hutchins is feeling tonight, as well as the other Detroit police officers. We appreciate it, Rod. Meantime, Officer Court's wife has been in contact with Local 4, sharing photos, talking about the way she'd like her husband to be remembered. He was much more than a police officer to her. They were together for 16 years and had two children, a 15-year-old son and a 9-year-old daughter. Christine Quartz calls him an amazing dad, her best friend, even referred to him as their Batman. She also shared some of the things she'll miss as she wrote this, quote, I am completely heartbroken. Me and my babies will never be the same. I already miss his hugs, his voice, his jokes, and his smile with those eyes. Rest in peace, Daddy. We will never stop loving you, end quote.
Meantime, Governor Gretchen Whitmer was in Troy this morning. She took some time to remember the fallen officer and talked about the challenges facing police and all of us. Gun violence is a uniquely American problem. Um, and I'm heartbroken for the family of the fallen officer. I know that the department, the city of Detroit, um, are wrapping their arms around the family, and I will be reaching out to the family as well. But, I, you know, this is just a, a proliferation of, of guns and um, gun violence. Now we'll bring you more memories of Officer Quartz later. New at 5, fellow tactical police officers who knew him share their memories, and the conversation does get emotional. At 5.30, Detroit Police Chief James White is scheduled to join us for a live interview to talk about what the department is going through. And then at 6, Quartz's father, who is a retired DPD sergeant, talks to us about losing his son in the line of duty. So make sure to stay with us for those stories. Investigators remain on the scene at Camp Dearborn after a young boy dies after falling from a play structure. State police say 10-year-old Carson Dunn was playing on a floating structure in the middle of the main lake when he fell in Milford Township last night. We're told the boy was unresponsive when police arrived. Milford firefighters took him to a nearby hospital, but he didn't make it. An autopsy is scheduled today to determine the official cause of death. Republican candidate for Michigan Governor Ryan Kelly has pleaded not guilty to federal charges connected to the January 6th insurrection. He appeared virtually for an arraignment in a D.C. court facing four misdemeanor charges. According to FBI documents, footage shows Kelly on the Capitol steps on January 6th and entering the courtyard. At a debate last night, Kelly said those at the Capitol were just exercising their First Amendment right to protest the results of the 2020 election. All right, let's take a few seconds to check on our first forecast. Meteorologist Brett Collar standing by. What does our Thursday evening look like, Brett? It looks good if you're going to be out. It's a touch warmer than it was yesterday, but still no complaints as we're dry and the humidity not terribly high at the moment. Low to mid 80s for a lot of us, but some cooler spots along the lakeshore. 75 right now, Gross Hill, 79 in Monroe. Now we've got some clearing out there, but these high clouds are the ones that have been filtering the sun pretty much all day long. We will see more clouds will gather as we head overnight tonight. That out ahead of the rain that's way out west. Coming this way for your Friday, so showers are on tap for tomorrow. But for this evening, just clouds on the increase as we fall into the 70s. We'll time out when that rain gets here and when it gets out of here, coming up in just a bit. Thank you very much, Brett. We've got some sad news, sad breaking news from Hollywood actor James Caan has died. He was the star of many films, some of the iconic films like The Godfather and Brian's Song. Caan also had ties to Michigan. Most didn't know that he was a football player at Michigan State University before his Hollywood career took off. His manager says Caan died yesterday but did not share the cause. James Kahn was 82 years old. There's a new bipartisan bill in Lansing that could allow alcohol sales at college stadiums. The legislation would lift a current state ban and allow universities to apply for liquor licenses to sell alcohol at basketball, football, and hockey games. Now, supporters of the bill say eight of the 14 schools in the Big Ten allow sales at football games. They also report positive results after the sales started with a decrease in the number of alcohol-related incidents. Here in Michigan, the legislation just starting that approval process. We'll be following that closely. Hundreds of local businesses getting a boost every year through the Buy Michigan Now Festival. It goes on in Northville. This year, organizers say the show will go on, but they're facing some challenges thanks to the economic climate that we're all living in. Local 4's Paula Tutman runs us through the concerns and why the festival is so important to so many people. When you want to support a Michigan company, you can come to Northville every August and know that you are getting the best, whether it's barbecue sauce to home goods to uniquely Michigan-made goods. This is where you come to meet local businesses, do commerce, and keep Michigan afloat. This year, post-COVID, the festival is facing a number of challenges. This festival is the major fundraiser for the entire Buy Michigan Now campaign. Yet, corporate sponsorship, the life's blood of any event, is significantly down. A lot of businesses are still struggling to employ people. They're still struggling to get the materials they need to make products. That's what makes an event like this so important to the community and to our campaign as a whole. There's never been a more important time to buy locally. 
and there's never been a more important time to support a campaign that is all about helping the businesses that surround the entire state of Michigan. Lisa Diggs is the founder of the Buy Michigan Now campaign. She says this festival will go on as planned August 5th through 7th, but the pain points are numerous in getting the goods to the people, vendors having trouble finding workers, gas prices making moving goods more expensive, and the general state of the economy. It is a threat to the public's participation. In previous years, this festival draws 25 or 30,000 people to downtown Northville, and it's been a struggle to bring it back as it has been for everyone. So this year we're looking for businesses that want to be out here, Michigan-based businesses that want to be vendors out here, businesses that want to sponsor the event it means so much to downtown Northville and it means a lot to the small businesses who've been waiting for an opportunity to get in front of their customers again. The festival is also a huge deal to Northville merchants who like the festival are trying to regain footing after the pandemic lockdowns and so an infusion of people in a festival like atmosphere that's family friendly and commerce forward is desperately needed. With the city opening up the streets and making the social district here in Northville and not having any of the festivals, um, a lot of people didn't come this way. So, but having the festivals brought a lot of people to the city of Northville. So what's needed now? If we can get the support of more businesses, we'll be able to bring more entertainers on board and spread money through the community in more ways than we're able to do it right now. Yeah, and so keep in mind, because this is a fundraiser, the impact from this festival really does impact Michigan makers for years to come. The bottom line is, buy Michigan now, and that campaign has been helping Michigan makers for 15 years. Now that festival needs Michigan makers and businesses to help them out, Karen. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Paula.